Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Snook with section 7.5, Rational Exponents and Radicals. And we, our objective is we're going to uh, rewrite expressions involving radicals and rational exponents. And actually, we can convert back and forth. If I write it as a radical, I can rewrite it as a rational exponent and the other way around. So here's our first problem. Figure at the right is made up of squares, and the side of the larger square is bisected by the vertices of the square one size smaller. So what that means is that these sides bisected, so they're cut in half. So this larger square, we're told is 16 on a side, so that means each piece is 8. And then it says, what are the values of A, B, and C? Hint, the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle equals a smaller side times square root of 2. Um, you will get to this next year in geometry. Just suffice it to say that these triangles here are all what we would call an isosceles right triangle. So if I want to look at A, I'm going to look at this triangle here that I'm darkening. And I know that each side of that triangle is 8. And it says that the hypotenuse is the side times the square root of 2. So A is going to be 8 times the square root of 2. And now it says to find B and C. Okay, so since I know A is 8 square root of 2, then I have another isosceles right triangle right here, and each side of that one is going to be half of that 8 square root of 2. So it's going to be 4 square root of 2 on a side. So then B is the smaller side, 4 square root of 2, and we're going to multiply that by a square root of 2. And if I get my calculator here, if I do 4 times and I put in a square root of 2, and then I multiply by a square root of 2, believe it or not, I just got 8. So B is 8. And then C, and now let's do C. So C is the hypotenuse right in here. So each little leg on C is going to be half of B, so that's going to be 4. And then you multiply that by root 2, so you get 4 root 2. And I can go ahead and punch that into my calculator. 4 times the square root of 2 is 5.65. Okay, so let's um, take a look at how we work with these radicals. First off, let's get some vocabulary. Right here is your radical sign. I will often just call it a radical. And then the number underneath the radical, the A in this picture, is the radicand. And then right in here, this little number here, that's the index. And um, if your index is not given, for example, if I write square root of 6, notice that I didn't put a number in for the index. So if that is not given, we're going to assume that it's 2. So assume index is 2 if it is not given. All right. So we're going to find some roots. So when we evaluate an expression with a radical in it, we call that finding roots. And on our first one, we're looking for the third root of 125. So what that means is a number that is cubed that would equal 125. So we've gone forward. I've given you 5 cubed, and you get 125. This is going backwards. We're going to start with the 125, and you're going to figure out the 5. And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to make a factor tree on the 125. Just pick the first two factors that pop into your head. Mine is um, 25 and 5. That's the first thing that came to my mind. 5 is already prime, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And I can get uh, two more factors on the 25. I get a 5 and a 5. 
So what that says is that 125 is 5 cubed, okay? And then when I want to take the cube root of that, that 5 just comes out. So there's my answer, okay? And the way I think of it is I group my numbers in the radicand in teams. And since my index is 3, I need a 3 on my team. And here's 1, 2, 3. So therefore, 5 cubed, my index is 3. Um, so you can think of it as it undoes the um, cubing. So I get 5. Now we're going to do um, the fourth root of 16. Here's another way to look at it. Since 16 is the fourth root, I can think of that as 16 to the 1 fourth, because that's another way of what fourth root means. And so now, let's do the factor tree on the 16 and see what happens. 16 is 4 times 4, and each 4 is 2 times 2. So now, I get 2 to the 4th to the 1 fourth. And remember, when you raise a power to a power, multiply those exponents. So 4 times 1 fourth, that's just 1. So our answer here is 2. Let's do fifth root of 32. 16 times 2. And then 8 and 2 is what came to my mind. 4 and 2. 2 and 2. So now 32, I can rewrite that as 2 to the 5th. And then I'm taking the 5th root of that. So I have a team of exactly five twos, which means that when I take that out of the fifth root, um, I only have one two that comes out. So I get a two there. All right, so here's a key concept to consider. When we're taking the nth root of a real number, and m and n are positive integers, and here's what happens. If I have a to the 1 over n, that's the same thing as saying the nth root of a. So if I wanted to do, let's say, 16, and I want to raise that to the, let's say, 1 fourth, that's going to be the same thing as saying the fourth root of 16. It also works if I want to raise my a to um, a fraction that doesn't have 1 in the uh, numerator. Let's say a to the 3 over 2. 2 goes in the index, and then the 3 stays as the exponent with the a. So you're going to get a cubed and then a square root of that. And now because we did a square root, we don't actually have to write that 2 you can write it as just square root of a cubed. And I can even simplify that. I know that a cubed is a squared times a, because when you multiply with the same base, you add those exponents. That gives me a team with two a's on it. So that a can come out, and the other a is stuck under the radical. All right. so. Let's do some converting into radical form. We're going to start with 12 times a to the 2 thirds. So that's going to be 12. We're going to multiply it by a to the 2 thirds. Let's go ahead and convert this to a radical. So I get a squared and I get a cube root. And that's done. That's in radical form. Now let's do 64a to the 2 thirds. Now, I can think of that as 64a squared, this whole thing squared, and then I can raise this to the 1 third. That's another way of looking at this. So let's figure out what 64 is. I'm going to do my factor tree, 8 and 8, and then each 8 is a 4 and a 2, and a 2 and a 2 which means that 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So my 64 
is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I get 2 to the 6th. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this in here as 2 to the 6th. Raise that to the 1 3rd. A to the 2. Raise that to the 1 3rd. I'm going to move this out of my way here. So then I get, I'm raising a power to a power, multiply those exponents. I get 2 to the 6 times 1 third, or 2 to the 2. And a to the 2, that's still to the 1 third, because I only took care of my 2's. So I'm going to get 4, and then I have a squared to the 1 third. And now let's go ahead and move it into radical form because I've got this pretty simple. So this is going to be 4 cube root of a squared. Okay, let's do one more. This one is going to be 32b all raised to the 2 fifths. I'm going to go ahead I'm going to kind of take a different approach to this one. Let's do the 32 first. So 32 is 16 times 2. 16 is 4 times 4. And then each 4 is 2 times 2. 2 times 2. So what I'm going to get is the fifth root of 32b squared which is the fifth root of 32 squared b squared. And 32, I already figured out, was 2 to the fifth. So I'm going to have the fifth root of 2 to the fifth times 2 to the fifth times b squared. Check it out. I now have two teams of five. I can pull each team out. So I pulled my first two out. I pull my second two out. That b squared, not enough to make a team of b's. So it is stuck under the radical. So fifth root of b squared. And I can simplify this one more step. 2 times 2 I know is 4. So 4 times the fifth root of b squared. That's our answer here. So we've converted into um, radical form from exponential form. Now let's go back the other way, because at the start of the video, I told you we could go both ways with this. So we're going to start with radicals, and we're going to go into exponential form. So I've got b cubed, and it's under a fifth root. So when I go into exponential form, I'm going to keep my b cubed, but my fifth root becomes power of one-fifth, one over five. That index goes in the denominator of your exponent. And then when I multiply my exponents together because I'm raising a power to a power, I get b to the 3 fifths. And we're done. All right, let's look at the cube root of 27d to the fifth. Okay, we're doing cube root. So I'm going to rewrite this as 27d to the fifth to the 1 third. I've taken care of my cube root. Now remember when I'm raising to powers, that power applies to everything inside the parentheses. So now I get 27 to the 1 third, d to the 5th to the 1 third. Check it out. 27, we can simplify. See what happens. 27 is 9 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. So 27 is 3 to the 3. So now I have 3 to the 3, so the 1 third, times d to the 5th to the 1 third. Multiplying exponents, 3 to the 3 to the 1 third, that just gives me 3. And then d to the 5th to the 1 third is d to the 5 thirds. All right, let's try one more. This time it's the fourth root of 256. So 256, that is 16 times 16. And then each 16 is a 4 times 4. 
and each 4 is a 2 times 2. So our 56 is 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, but we got to square that. So this is going to be 2 to the 4 times 2 to the 4, or 2 to the 8. So we figured out that 256 is 2 to the 8th. So what we're doing here is the fourth root of 2 to the 8th times a to the 8th. Let's go ahead and convert into exponential form. So I'm going to get 2 to the 8th, raise that to the 4th, to the 1 fourth. So remember your index goes in the denominator of the exponent. a to the 8th, raise that to the 1 fourth. All right, multiply your exponents together. 2 to the 8th raised to the 1 fourth is 2 squared. And then the same thing with a to the 8th to the 1 fourth, I get a squared. That gives me 4a squared. So there's my answer there. All right, let's do a real world example. Um, you can estimate the metabolic rate of living organisms based on the body mass using Kleiber's law. The formula is R equals 73.3 times the fourth root of M cubed. So R is going to be the calories that they're burning, and then M is the mass. And it says, what is the metabolic rate of a dog with a body mass of 18 uh, kilograms? So plug this in. We know the rate is 73.3 times the fourth root of 18 cubed. Grab your handy dandy calculators. We're going to do uh, 73.3 times I hit my radical button, but now I'm going to hit the math button, which is right here. Hit that math button, and I want to do a fourth root. So I'm going down to number five. That gives me the option to put in whatever I want for the index. So I'm going to do a fourth root. I'm having calculator issues, 73.3 times, don't forget your times, so 73.3 times. Now hit the math button, and then choose number 5. So that lets me do 73.3 times, and it's letting me put in whatever I want for my index. I'm going to put in a 4, and then inside, I'm going to do 18 cubed. I hit my answer key and I get R equals 640.6. And then it says, what is the metabolic rate of a man with a mass of 75 kilograms? So now where that 18 was, we're going to put in 75. I'm going to do fourth root of 75 cubed. Neat trick you can do on your calculator is arrow up to where you'd entered it. Press enter. That lets me go in and change it. I'm going to change that 18 to a 75. I'm going to hit this back arrow. Until I get to the 18, I'm going to put a 7 and a 5 in its place. This time I got 1,868.1. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Thank you for watching and have a great day.